Hi, my name is Ernie Kleiman, and today I'd like to talk about luthier knives. The reason I'd like to talk about them is because I think they're an incredibly effective tool in the luthery workshop, and instead of spending a lot of money on expensive tools, you can do a lot of work with a simple knife. In my hand over here, I've got a number of different samples of knives. Two of them are commercial, and two of them are homemade. So I'm just going to give you a brief little overview on them. Here's a Japanese double bevel uh, handmade knife, which is pretty expensive. I think these run about $25 to $30 from Japan Woodworker. Great knife, very sharp, very effective. Here's another uh, knife, also a three quarter inch, a slightly larger knife from Hawk. And it's a great knife as well, holds a really sharp edge, works great for instrument making. And here in my hand, I've got two homemade knives which don't look as good but are pretty effective and with little or no out-of-pocket money you can make a great luthier knife on your own with just with scrap lying around in your shop. This one over here is kind of like a dull detail knife. It's got a 60 degree angle on it which is hard to see over here and it's been basically epoxied into an inexpensive maple dowel with a hole in it for hanging up on your wall. And this one basically, the, the bevel on this is a single bevel. The back is flat, the, the, the grind is it's a 60 degree grind to the back over here and about an 8 to 15 degree grind between the edge and the back. And the one that we're going to discuss the most here is my favorite little shop knife over here. This is about a 3 quarter of an inch knife and it's got a round curve to it from the front to the bottom and the, the curve from the edge of the blade to the back is about uh, 8 or 9 millimeters or close to 3 eighths of an inch. But anywhere between 1 quarter of an inch to 3 eighths of an inch or more is a suitable for a bevel back here. But this one's curved and I'll discuss why I use the curve later on. Suffice to say that the reason I put that curve in is to work on curved surfaces when I'm building my ukes and other instruments. And a, and a simple light knife like this can be made out of an old used file that you can pick up at a yard sale or you might even have one with your drawer. And you can do it all without doing the three steps for, uh, for metal work which are annealing, heating, annealing and tempering. So you can, you can get, the reason you can get by with that is because the knife itself is very, the, the file is very hard and very brittle. When you grind it down to the part over here, down the very edge, it's very soft. So it makes it very easy to work with. You don't have to do any annealing unless you overheat the knife. So be very, very careful when you're grinding down the back and the, and the bevel that you don't overheat the knife. The back has to be dead flat. And the way I do that is I rub this back and forth. You can do it either on a sandpaper or a diamond stone or a grinder if you have one. Basically you want to remove all the marks that are left from the uh, file so that it's basically flat, dead flat in the back as a reference point and very shiny. So your two points are the bevel angle over here and the flat back in order to create a really really sharp knife. And when you start making this knife, this one here is very simple. It's just made from pieces of maple, a half inch piece, one part of the, uh, the knife is cut out and there's a recess created uh, this is about five-eighths of an inch to three-quarters inside the piece of wood it's about an eighth of an inch recess or dado the, the, the knife is glued together with minus the knife inside of it and then I put on uh, a threaded allen screw to t tighten and lock down the knife against the back of the wood so it's a very simple operation it's easily done at home. And make sure you grind everything back and start with your lower grits. You want to eliminate and erase all the signs of the grooves in your file. And you want to have two very sharp edges here, the back and the front. And where they meet, it's going to create a very sharp edge. And you can have a really nice sharp knife. And you want to make sure you go through all the grits carefully. Like start on a, on a rough stone, 220 to 100 or 600 diamond or sandpaper, you know, a lower grit sandpaper that is like 80 to 100, and gradually work your way up so you want a really flat back. 
and then eventually you want to get to the point where you polish this knife. You want to polish the back. You can use either red jeweler's rouge, white rouge, or green compound rouge. Now, the things I like to uh, use these knives on, and I'll demonstrate over here, I like to use the knife on the back heel over here, in that corner heel, the transition between the back heel and the transition back into the neck is an effective place for the knife. I like to profile the back over here of the, the ukulele neck with the knife. You can get into all the little tight corners, which is harder to do with a file. And I find that a knife works really, really well there. Also, a lot of times you can take the knife and if you hold it one hand and put it in a vise, you can basically use the, the knife as a plane or a spoke shape to cut down the angle in the back of the neck to create the profile that you uh, like to have. Also, the transition between the back of the headstock and the beginning of the neck is also a great place to use a knife because you want to gradually work in that transition so you have a nice smooth transition between your hand, the headstock, and the neck so it feels nice and comfortable to you. Another place I like to use the knife is when I'm turning back the veneer. This one, has, this, um, uh, what is this, uh, cottonwood neck has a uh, rosewood overlay on the headstock and typically when the veneer goes on here you can either plane it off, sand it off or very carefully use a knife as a backer and slowly slide the piece off there getting off the excess material. Another place I like to use the knife is to trim the back of the of the cap here on the heel, heel on the bottom Another piece of rose, I like to trim it off with a knife. Am I almost done? No? Okay. And another place I like to use the knife is right around the edges over here. When I'm gluing on the top, typically I'll always have a bit of an overhang. And a lot of you might use an, uh, a router to uh, get some of the material off parallel to the ribs over here, the sides but you can also use a knife by following the, the ribs and taking off the excess very slowly all around the perimeter of the top and in this case the perimeter of the back is all in sycamore, American sycamore and you can also carefully knock that off. The problem with using a rudder sometimes if you're not paying attention you might run into some short grain and it's going to knock or skid a piece of your material off back into the top or back of the instrument. So a knife, come, a knife can come in very handy to flush cut the um, top or the back to the ribs of your instrument. So that's all I wanted to discuss for today. And to maintain the sharpness of your knife at your luthier's workbench, I always keep a block. This is just a piece of uh, pine glued to a piece of particle board. And there's a thin piece of leather here that's charged with uh, red jeweler's rouge. And I constantly, you know, sharpen this as I'm working. You might want to keep this at your workshop table to constantly keep this knife really razor sharp. I'm sure you'll find a lot of uses for this homemade knife. If you have any more questions, please email me at www.ateliertommy.com. Thank you. Have fun.